A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Even if we keep a rigid routine, everyone experiences disruptions to their sleep schedules throughout the week. Simply sleeping in on a Saturday or having one late night can leave a lingering feeling of sluggishness during the week. Dr. Emily Manoogian is a researcher at the Salk Institute in California. And she says this feeling is similar to the disruptions caused by travel jet lag. In fact, researchers are calling these bumps in our routines social jet lag. And today, Emily will share how widespread this health issue is and why we should pay more attention to our body's master clock. For the past 10 years, I've been studying chronobiology, the timing of biology. I've got to explore this field through endocrinology and neuroscience, and all my experiments have been in the lab. But to design my latest experiment, I found myself on a rooftop at 3 a.m. watching an elevator rescue, and then 20 minutes later, speeding down the middle of the street in a fire truck. And those were two of eight calls that we went on between 10 p.m and 6 a.m., all so I could understand the demands of a 24-hour shift schedule on firefighters. At the end of that ride-along, I went home and I went to sleep. And at the same time, a lot of firefighters on call that night were just starting their next 24-hour shift. As a researcher here at Salk, I'm now applying my knowledge of chronobiology to help a wide variety of individuals, including firefighters, to help prevent and treat disease. I've been in the field of chronobiology for a while, and I'm still blown away by the importance of timing and biology and the beautifully intricate system that regulates it. And it still astonishes me that, as a society, we're largely unaware of and thus ignore our biological clocks. Circadian is Latin for about a day, and we use the term circadian rhythms because in almost every living organism, we see clear 24-hour patterns at every level of biology, including behavior, physiology, and even individual cell function. In humans, when we think of behavioral rhythms, the first thing that comes to mind is sleep and wake cycles. Almost every cell in your body has a molecular clock that keeps about a 24-hour rhythm. Now, I say about because each one keeps slightly different time, so you need something to coordinate them. To do this, we have a master clock in our brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN for short, which is a complicated name for where it's located. Now, not only does the SCN coordinate all these clocks throughout your body, but it also incorporates external cues from the environment. Circadian disruption occurs when those internal circadian clocks are challenged by conflicting external cues. The most common examples are shift work and jet lag. Each schedule is a little different, but they all face abnormal patterns in sleep, eating, and activity. They're the crux of our society. They keep everything going. Our newscasters, cleaning crews, chefs, construction workers, journalists. And the heroes of our society, the firefighters, police officers, doctors, EMTs, nurses, and military, they take the hardest schedules mentally and physically challenging, that just to support our community. Yet, unfortunately, shift work is linked to a wide variety of diseases. In fact, the World Health Organization actually lists shift work as a carcinogen. Yet, there's still no way to stop these risks from increasing and keep doing harm. Now, you may not do shift work, but I'm guessing that everyone here has been jet-lagged And I'm not just talking about that first day of sleep deprivation. I'm talking about those following days of muscle weakness, nausea, moodiness, fuzzy thinking, and exhaustion at seemingly random times of day. That's a feeling of circadian disruption. And this is because our bodies were not meant for airplane travel. Now, unfortunately, circadian disruption is not limited to shift work and jet lag our society has become exceptional 
and ignoring and disrupting our body's natural rhythms. It can start with something really simple. Say it's a Friday night and you've had a really long week, and all you want to do is come home, relax, and just you know let it ease off. So you do, you eat, and then you know it's time to binge watch your favorite TV show, and then you'll need a drink or a snack to go with it, and the show is very good, and so you'll need another drink. And before you know it, it's one or two in the morning before you finally put that last drink or snack down. And that sounds like a great Friday night. <laughs> Unfortunately, Monday rolls around, and you're back on your regular schedule. You might be waking up two or three hours earlier than you did on the weekend. It's a very common story. It's a very common way in which we naturally disrupt our body's rhythms. In fact, it's so common that there's actually a term for this. These really large shifts. Between our weekdays and weekends, or free days and work days, is actually referred to as social jet lag. So, what are we going to do about this? Light talks directly to that master clock in your brain, the SCN. Research is ongoing, but this is what we know so far. You need to keep your body on its schedule so it can prepare itself for what it needs to do. This means using those external cues to support your biological clocks, tell it when it's morning and when it should be awake, and decrease stimulation at night so it can get a proper rest. We've all probably heard of the role of light in sleep. In the morning, you need to get lots of bright light. I'm not talking about office light. I'm talking about natural sunlight. You can easily do this by taking a 10-minute walk outside. Or if the only light that you're going to get is on your commute to work, and the sun isn't hitting you directly in the eyes, try not wearing sunglasses. And at night, to tell your body it's time to rest, dim or turn off lights that you're not using. The circadian system is a pillar of health that, for far too long, has been ignored or misunderstood. And we now know that with simple, non-invasive lifestyle changes. We can support our biological clocks. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in San Diego, California. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx San Diego Salon. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Visit our website at ted.com/tedxshorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.